Just going to give you a quick warning, this video contains massive spoilers, like major spoilers for Resident Evil Village. So if you haven't played the game yet and want to play it spoiler free, don't watch the video. Have a good day. So this is going to be like my honest review on Resident Evil Village. What I'm going to say for, for, the, for the start is it started off, I was really surprised on how it started off. Because as you can see on the screen at the moment, it started off like this. It really looks like some sort of storybook that you'd see in like Coraline or something. So I was really not expecting Resident Evil, like a Resident Evil game. So I was really not expecting like a Resident Evil game to start off like this, considering it's such like a scary franchise, like it's a horror franchise obviously. So it kind of reminds me of like a Tim Burton thing, but like not stop motion. Because like if you look at the art style, it's really, you know, similar to the kind of like Tim Burton, Coraline type stuff. So, yeah, it pretty much just tells a story of how, you know, it's like a legend, pretty much. I'm not going to spoil a lot, because I'm not a spoiler. I'm not Tom Holland. So, like, you know, it tells a story of, you know, it's like a legend of... It's like an urban legend, pretty much. I'm rambling too much about rubbish. So, it's like an urban legend about, you know, how... This girl just gets trapped in a mirror because she, she doesn't obey these four lords of this village. So it's a very weird start to a game. Uh, so, yeah, it's like a really strange start to, to this game. So, I'll just let you watch and listen if you want. So the girl ate and smiled with joy once more. Continuing on, she soon entered the forest dark heart. Then an iron steed appeared, bearing a beautiful golden gear. The creature said nothing as the girl approached and snatched what she thought was another gift. The horse grew angry and summoned the other monsters. Terror filled the girl's heart as the wild wind rose around the beast. Suddenly, a witch appeared, dark yet regal. So yeah, very strange start to such a, you know, scary game. Um, this game, you know, Resident Evil, it's gonna be, you know, freaky. It's gonna be kind of like, it's gonna be scary, you know, it's a horror game. So there's gonna be a few jump scares and stuff, but what I found, I'm not gonna lie, the game for a Resident Evil game lacked, you know, scary material. like. You know, Resident Evil 7, I'm not sure if I got too spoiled by Resident Evil 7, considering how terrifying that game was. I'm not sure if I got spoiled by it too much, or I just didn't find this as scary as the rest of them. But, there was one bit in particular, which I found just, just terrifying. Uh, for me, it takes a lot to sc like scare me. Resident Evil 7 is an, is an exception, because the game is terrifying anyway. But, this part in this game is an exception just because how, dis not disturbing, but just how abnormal and creepy it was. I'll get to that later. So, yeah, I'll get to that later. You'll see what it is, and if you've already played the game, you'll know what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to talk about, you know, how the game kind of felt to, like, play as a Resident Evil game. Because, you know, Resident Evil games are meant to be kind of like, like, kind of tricky to play, if you know what I mean? Because, like, they're kind of like puzzle slash horror games. I'm just going to say the puzzles in this game, they were confusing. I'm not going to lie, they were, you know, confusing, but they weren't hard. They weren't really hard or difficult. Yeah, so there were a few puzzles which I did have to search up on YouTube because I'm... I'm lazy, I can't bother to find them out on my own because I, I'm i useless at these type of games. That's why I was kind of reluctant to kind of like get it, but I like horror games. But just the fact that I, I suck at puzzles, but the fact that the puzzles weren't that difficult in this game was good. But obviously, yeah, there were a few which were were difficult. Like, the, the large, majority of, large majority of them were okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say about the puzzles. But now I'm just going to talk about like the like the character like like the villains. I'm just going to say that they're you know they are nerve wracking to be around. 
especially yeah especially lady d because she's <clears throat> massive she you know doesn't look scary but when you're being chased by her it's nerve-wracking like the stress that she gave me while chasing me it was so nerve-wracking it was unreal you know resident evil has to have these awesome characters to play a part in this like the game to scare you and to make you feel uncomfortable like like the thing i really like about resident evil is the fact that it gives you these awesome characters like heisenberg here let's see what you're doing there. ethan winters so i'm going to talk about all these like villains in their own levels so as you can see now we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite lady d so what i'm going to say is the fact that lady d and her daughters could have had way more screen time than they actually had just because you know their developers made them out to be you know that the main villains of the game like they made that lady d to be like you know like the main like scary villain of the game because there was so much hype around her and her daughters and just the whole castle in general I'm not gonna sound disappointed because I'm not, but like they could definitely get way more screen time than they can because this castle is such an awesome setting for like a Resident Evil game because you know it's a massive castle that is probably you know hundreds of hundreds of years old. You can have anything in it, you know. You can, they could have had anything in it, but you know they kind of it felt like. It just felt really short. I know it wasn't short because it was like a couple, a couple of hours long. But it felt kind of like we didn't get a lot of... Well, these guys didn't get a lot of screen time, you know. But like, this, from the screen time they did get, it kept me on edge the whole time. Because the daughters, they have this form they turn into. They turn into like bugs. They fly. They can fly towards you and they're, they're flipping fast. Not going to lie to you, they are fast. So, that put me on edge the whole time. Then, Lady D, like, the only parts that put me on edge with Lady D is when she was chasing me around tight spaces, like, just, un there's this part underneath the castle. She chased me around that, and you have to, oh god, that kept me on edge the whole damn time. So what I'm going to say now is the fact that this is going to have to be split into two parts, or maybe even three. So this is going to be the end of part one, because my editing software is useless and can't handle so many voice clips. So I'll see you in part two, should be uploaded maybe tomorrow. So I'll see you in part two. Goodbye.